Hi everyone, so let's now take a look at different types of savings and investments that can be undertaken by individuals. Let's start off firstly with deposit or savings accounts here. So this is different from a current account. Current accounts, of course, are designed for daily use, daily inflows and outflows of money. Generally, they don't offer great interest returns, although there are some exceptions to that where current accounts can offer a good level of interest. Uh, you'll just need to check different banks and have a look at the different products that are available. And of course, these vary at different times. Okay. Okay, so when it comes to savings accounts, this is really about allocating money to save away for a particular reason uh, or just for a rainy day, perhaps. OK, um, so this is where, of course, interest is paid on positive saving balances. Uh, so you earn some uh, return on any savings that were actually taking place. Obvious advantages is that you earn interest, but you could also use a regular saver account. Regular saver accounts often uh, provide a very, very competitive interest rate of the order of five or possibly even six percent. Again, check uh, different banks and uh, what sort of uh, offers are actually available. It's so regular savers. That's where you actually uh, save on a monthly basis and each month you allocate a particular amount of savings to undertake. Okay, that helps budgeting and it can help you to actually reach targets because you know that money is coming out, okay, uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, the disadvantages, well, interest earned is taxed, okay, so you've got to bear that in mind. If you are paying income tax, you will have to pay income tax on your interest that is earned. Uh, and further to that, the interest uh, provided on savings products uh, and savings accounts more generally is often far below that uh, than what you're actually borrowing. So if you've got a loan perhaps of £10,000 which you've used to buy a car and you're paying 5.5% interest on that loan, meanwhile you've got £1,000 of savings and you're only getting 2% perhaps interest on that, well your money would be better used in actually paying back some of that borrowing. Okay, so you've got to you've got to work out the actual individual scenario there. And of course, when it comes to your exam, you're likely to be given uh, a very specific individual example. Okay, next up. Uh, so we've got ISAs. So these are individual savings accounts. Um, there's two types of ISAs, really. You've got the cash ISA, which is simply depositing cash, and it provides a guaranteed return, which tends to be quite, quite small. Uh, but then there is also... Uh, the stocks and shares ISA. The stocks and shares ISA obviously involves a lot more risk uh, and doesn't have the security that the cash ISA does. Uh, the stocks and shares ISA can go up, it can go down. So that's something to be aware of. The stocks and shares ISA, however, allows you to put uh, considerably more in each year in terms of your savings. Uh, so yes, there is, there is a limit and each year this uh, limit is actually adjusted. So have a look at that. But here we're talking about a savings account where uh, the saver's interest is not taxed. And that really is the difference. On both types of ISAs, there is no taxation taking place. Um, so that really is the big advantage in actually taking out these individual savings accounts. There's no tax on them. Uh, okay, interest rates are often higher than savings accounts as well, although you can get savings accounts where you lock your money away for perhaps a period of three years, uh, and you can get good returns on uh, those sorts of products, uh, but generally speaking, ISAs do tend to offer, a cash ISA will tend to offer slightly higher interest rate than a general savings account. Um, again, check what different banks are actually providing at the moment. Okay. Then downside to this, well, some accounts require notice uh, before you can actually withdraw any money. So that is that your money isn't actually that liquid, perhaps. Uh, there's also limits on the amount that can be invested. Uh, OK, as we mentioned there, so that is an annual limit for each individual. OK, so let's now have a look at premium bonds. Premium bonds, quite controversial. Uh, OK, so. This is a government scheme that allows individuals to save a set amount by buying bonds. 
Okay, now the government has quite a significant national debt and one of the ways in which they uh, finance that debt is by offering uh, premium bonds. So these premium bonds, you buy these bonds uh, and you actually allocate money to that, which is secure. It is a very, very secure form of saving and it does put that money away quite nicely to use on a rainy day. Uh, but it is then a bit of a lottery as to whether you will get any returns or not. And you have a chance of winning uh, more than could be earned uh, in interest, okay? Considerably more in, in some very exceptional circumstances. Uh, the money can also be easily withdrawn uh, and any wins that you actually get are tax free. So the potential winnings start at £25 but they all rise all the way up to one million pounds. So it goes from 25 uh, pounds, uh, then uh, jumps considerably up to 100,000, and then from 100,000 it goes uh, up to one million pounds. Uh, okay, so there, there are quite substantial prizes out there. However, there is of course no guarantee that you will win, but if you do win, you will not be taxed on that. So uh, just as we saw with the savings accounts, you will be taxed, here you won't be. Uh, okay, but there is no guarantee of winning, uh, and the amount invested may actually lose value, because if you do not win, and inflation is perhaps say 3%, then it means in real terms, your money is going down in its purchasing power at 3% per year. Uh, and if you haven't had any wins at all, well, that's that's not great. It's, it's really not great at all. And actually, there is a one in, uh, I put 35 billion here, but it's actually 36 billion chance of winning 1 million pounds. Uh, so the chances of doing this are considerably worse uh, than the monopoly, uh, the... Uh, monopoly the lottery um, so uh, participating in the lottery actually has uh, a better chance of winning the top prize okay so highly controversial uh, it's also argued that given that uh, you, you do have these individual savings accounts um, and that there is a tax-free allowance there then what is the point in investing in this? Because yes, okay, your wins aren't tax-free, are tax-free, but that removes a considerable advantage when you consider our ISA product there. Okay, 